Welcome in episode 45 live Rami and Drew. I'm Rami Makloff. That's Drew Flaggy. We're a couple of uh, Milwaukee comedians. We talk sports and whatever else comes to mind. And Drew, uh, we have a special guest today. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome this guy in and say he's back on Milwaukee Sports Talk Radio. The only thing that would make me happier than this guy being back on Milwaukee Sports Talk Radio is me being back on Milwaukee Sports Talk Radio. It is Steve Sparky Pfeiffer, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is on the Rami and Drew show. Hello, Spark Dog. How are you this evening, my friend? You know, I, I learn something every time I come on this show. You know, I, I do podcasts too, right? Curtin Long podcast, talking yeah. about green and growing, talking about uh, spare time, bowling show, uh, talking mm -hmm. about the PBA tour. Next episode coming up Friday afternoon. Uh, mm -hmm. But none of us get makeup done before the show like Drew does. I mean, Drew came in here trying to get all prim <laughs> offering the whole deal i'll be honest with you I, I didn't know that was a thing with drew but drew is very about drew making sure he looks just right <laughs> fixing the hair to be just right in the whole deal and getting the hat tilted just the right way man drew you, <laughs> you're about bringing it man yeah I, I i i hear you that's cool i uh so I, I was at the gym before this and uh, i was playing basketball just giving the boys the buckets you know and uh shooting the hoop dude i scored the last uh eight points in a game of three on three to 20 nice. hey. Dude, fucking, I hit two three-pointers, uh, and then I hit a mid-range step back, then I hit another three, and then I pump faked, got inside, and I threw up a little floater, and you know what? I should have yelled subscribe to the pod, but I yes. said spray <laughs> instead, so uh, <laughs> I hit him with the spray young. I like it. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, from now on, you, you, gotta, you gotta say listen, subscribe to the pod. I uh, for those, who, for those I who don't know... Yeah, no, but that's okay. We can we can adopt it. For those who don't know, I said Sparky's back on Milwaukee Sports Talk Radio. Uh, Sparky, tell the people uh, where they're at before before where you're at before we get into all of this. Yeah, sure, no problem because you didn't have me on for the first show that came on. Uh, Potawatomi well, we uh, tried, Sportsbook. and you know we tried. That's not fair. Go ahead. Potawatomi Sportsbook Pro Hoops Post Game Show served up mm -hmm. by Wendy's. Uh, was the first show uh, on Rami. Uh, that started on March 4th after each and every Milwaukee Bucks basketball game. I am there like I was for so long before on 1250 AM. The fan, along with my producer, Charlie Houston, who's doing a great job uh, taking your calls, uh, playing highlights, listening to Doc Rivers, uh, the whole deal after every game. So next game, Sunday night, Bucks Pacers, or whenever the game is on Sunday, come hang out with us immediately following the buzzer. If you're at Pfizer Forum, definitely want to hear from you uh, after the game. And then the most recent show, uh, and kind of uh, a really big deal too, is now we have a Monday through Friday daily show back on 1250s. Hey. So we're trying to bring local back here. Two to five in the afternoon, Wisconsin Sports Daily. Uh, and I know everybody's asking, whoa, uh, is Bart on the show? No, fool, he's making a lot of money doing national radio. Why the hell would Bart be doing local radio with me for? <laughs> well, Ryan Horvath, he's got to be on. No, same thing. No, he's not either. Bet QL Radio Network. He ain't coming on either locally. No. Uh, uh no, it's me and Charlie using and the rest of the clowns y'all want back. Just give it time. Let's just see what we can get through this show. And then we'll see what happens after that. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what, what do you got your hands up in the air for? What? Huh? What's huh? What about one clown in particular? Huh? Yeah. I talked to mm -hmm. Sam Schmitz the other day. He's over at uh, channel 12, uh, <laughs> producing, uh, but I, I mean, he's making good money too. It sounds like over channel 12. So I don't know if I'll get Sam back either, but I mean, that I'm going to be point. on the show Thursday for the whole four o'clock hour. I'm joining Sparky oh. in the studio. He doesn't know about it yet, but I'm going to be on the show Thursday for the Charlie entire books. People I don't know. I mean, I, I'm surprised Charlie knew who you were, but, but sure. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. You'll be on the show Friday. What day is it? Thursday. You're on uh, Thursday, Thursday. Yes. Thursday, Thursday, four o'clock. Thursday, four o'clock. Yeah. Sweet. I can leave early then. You can just do that hour. I'm no, no. Home. I'm in there no. with you. What? We're doing a thing. We're talking to each other for an hour. Remember when we used to do that? Yeah. All right. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> All right. Make Last time we didn't let Drew talk. Drew, I'm going to ask this question. Then you you ask a Bucks question. My first question has nothing to do with the Bucks. And I'm going to do exactly what you would do. And have done to me in the past, Sparky, which is uh, what's up with the name of your show? You said this to me about multiple shows that I've yeah. had where you just you don't ask me off the air. You just ask me on the air and critique sure. it and tell me you don't like it. Right. So um, what's with what's with why not? We've had Sparky's Midday Madness. Right. We've had the big show. Yeah. You just went through all the cleverly named shows that you host. You have 
the green and growing and the spare time yeah. bowling show, Wisconsin sports daily. I mean, I'm glad you're back, but I right. got, I'm going to, I don't love the name. I'm just going to okay. tell you, I don't love the name of the show and why. So, so let's talk about some of the names that I've had. Right. So let, yes. let's start there. Right. Um, yeah. what, the big show, which was the Wendy's big show, the big show uh, that was brought mm -hmm. up by Ryan McGuire, our old program director uh, name that I didn't like. I was like, dude, there's like a hundred big shows around the country. Why the hell do I want to be called the big show? Like everybody else? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, no, no. It's going to be the big show. Okay, fine. And, and that was, you know, Gary, me, Josh Vernier. Um, and that's how that started. And then it stuck obviously forever. Uh, what other one did you bring up? Oh, Sparky's midday madness. Um, that was brought up back in the day when I did that nine to 11 shift. Um, and that was brought up by Eric Hammy and Kevin Stonis, two former sales guys, uh, came up with that one. Because if you remember around me back in the day, I, I was very angry at life in general on a 24 hour basis. Yeah. It was uh, fun. As an individual. You're, you were more fun back then. Yeah. I, I'm not nearly <laughs> as mad anymore, uh, but either way. So that's how that came up. And then, you know, we had that there at the end again, Sparky's midday madness. Uh, I was doing for an hour from two to three uh, back in 22. So at Sparky's Midday Madness would have worked here had I been in like that 11 and two slot in place of Rome. But that's not where I didn't mean to go through up. a whole history of your radio well, not, career not, and the names up. of the Look, shows you've had. I, I just wanted to up, know man. what's up with the name of this let's, show. Let's just go through this. So the Green and Growing podcast name it comes from the Green and Growing song that used to play after Bucks wins. You remember back in the yes. day, it was made in the 70s. Yeah. Love, so that's how that podcast yeah, that name song. came up. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Spare Time Bowling Show, just like it used to be on SSP for a decade. We brought that back with Dwight Albrecht and Phil Brylo. That is because the name of Dwight Albrecht's pro shop in New Berlin Bowl is called the Spare Time Pro Shop. So that's how that name uh, came up there. Curtin Long was a play on words. Yes. Spare time. Yeah. 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 Curtin yeah. Long was uh, a name suggested to me by 2400 Sports. That was their idea. I said, sure, fine, let's do it. So that's what Ryan Horvath and I went with. Wisconsin Sports Daily. They asked me. I said, I don't <laughs> care. Um, and the general manager said, I like Wisconsin Sports Daily. I said, works for me. Let's go. Um, and that's how it came up. So that's how oh, wait, we got to was Wisconsin the, Sports Daily. This was the general manager's idea? Yeah. Jason Bjorsen. It's a yeah, great, this that's is a, his, dude, this it's is, a great name for a show. It is. Yeah. I love, mm -hmm. I love the name for that show. That's well, a great, again, great name you know, for a sports talk radio show. But I mean, the other thing too is this, right? I mean, if this ever gets to be a statewide show again, at some point, I mean, if it's in perfectly, mm -hmm. like whatever station you're that's listening true. on. Everybody can relate Brilliant. to that. It, it makes sense if at some point it goes statewide again or whatever. Yeah. And the one thing I wanted to do with this show, because, I mean, you know, since this whole thing went down in 22, I hear it all the time on social media. I'm sure you hear it too. It's all they do is talk about the Packers. They don't talk about anything else. I, I just want a show that talks about the Packers, Bucks, and Brewers. That's all I want. Can't find that. Blah, 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 blah. It's they don't take calls. And when they do, they get take one or two, and then they don't take any more. And all of these same complaints over and over and over again. And I don't respond to any of that stuff. It's like, whatever, man. They're doing the best they can on their on their shows, on their stations. They have direction from their bosses. Like, they're going to do what they're going to do. It ain't my deal. I'm not getting in the middle of that. So when they came back to me and they said, hey, we want to try and bring this thing back. Are you in? I, yeah, of course. So now I get kind of an idea of how I want to create this show. And my idea was, I'm going to do what the people want. We're going to do it their way. Everything I've heard complained about, I'm going to try and do it their way. And I said it right off the jump, um, episode one on Monday. And I, I said, look, if in a year, nobody's listening and the bosses are like, this isn't working, then all of your ideas go out the window and I'm going to have to do it the way they want to do it. So are you going to tell works. everybody they're wrong? Be like, you were wrong. We're going to do it different now. Well, you'll know because it'll change. I mean, it will yeah, absolutely sure. change. And so the goal is three hour show, which by the way, is not very long. Like I, it's that's not the sweet spot show. for me. That's the sweet spot for doing it, for being a sports talk radio host, four hours, too long, two hours. I feel like I left too much on the table. Three hours. Perfect. I love it. It's it's money. That's that's the sweet spot. For yeah, it's just radio. not a, it's just not a lot of time. I talk a lot. So to me, it yeah. goes like that. Shut up. Right. Shut up. So, every once in a while. so yeah. Packers, Brewers and Bucks. So every day, Monday through Friday on the show, 
there will be at least one segment dedicated to each one of those teams. Now, there'll be days like NFL Draft Week where it's going to be a lot of Packers, but there will be at least one segment to the Brewers and at least one segment to the Bucks in those shows if we're talking majority Packers. We're recording this on Tuesday night. The first two shows, you know, two of the large topics have been Bucks the first two shows, but we still did a Brewers topic. We still did a Packers topic, whether it's an interview uh, for those guys or whatever. So that is always going to be a thing. When we get into Badger football, I am going to do some Badger football stuff. I know that's taboo in this market. I understand. But I'm still going to try and force some Badger football on you um, and, and try and ride that train a little bit too and see if we can follow get, get some Badger fans involved here. And then as far as calls go, I want full phone lines. I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal here at some point. I want to be able to turn on the microphone and we got everybody lined up and ready to talk about whatever we're going to talk about today. I want this to be a community type talk show where everybody feels like part ownership. Like that's my show. Those are my guys. Those are my friends that call in and listen to Sparky. That's what I want this thing to be. I don't want it to be listening on my radio to Sparky talk to himself for three hours. Like that, that to me, that's, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe that's what you want to do. I don't want to talk to myself for three hours. I want to talk to you all and read tweets and do all that fun stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm anxious to see how big time this will work. Um, how much fan interaction I will get. Will I get as much as I want? Or will I be let down? Hopefully, I won't be let down. Hopefully, oh, we'll no. get a ton of You'll response. The, pe and, the and, people you know, are glad. The people are right, happy. But, I mean, Spark really, back. if we're going to use this to be productive on this podcast, I, I want to use it to be productive in one way. This podcast? All right. This podcast. Well, I mean, Drew podcast. We're going to mm. make this productive. I have okay. a mission for everybody that listens to this thing. The thousands and thousands of people that listen to this podcast Find me Notebook Mike, man. Where is the dude? I need to talk to Notebook Mike. I need Notebook Mike on my show, man. I need to talk to Notebook Mike. Tell us I in the comments. Need, if, if you go, I tell us in the comments Mike, where man. Notebook Mike is. Probably. Yeah, I want Notebook Mike, man. I mean, I've had, you What's know, up, Drew? I've had a bunch of the regulars call in. Martinez was the first caller on the first show, Wisconsin Sports Daily. Boom, first segment. Here we go, ready to go. So Justin in North Carolina has been calling in. Vincent in Anaheim, our Raptors fan, he's been calling in. Like, we got a lot of the regulars, but there's some guys that I'm missing, right? I I'm missing some guys. Notebook what Mike is one guy that I kind of miss. I, I want to talk to Notebook Mike, make sure he's okay, make sure he's he's good. So Drew, I'm looking for Notebook theory? Mike. No, I just said, I was going to say, let's make it even easier for everybody and pop a banner on with the phone number that they can call for Sparky. How about that? Yeah, perfect. Oh, so I that, can do that. Oh, do yeah, that. yeah that, that, that's good. Yeah. 414-677-1250. 414-677-1250. That's the number you call, you know, two to five weekdays on 1250 AM. Uh, the fan, I recommend two things. A, make 1250 a preset back in your car. I know y'all took us out. I know. It's okay. I'm not too offended. <laughs> I didn't. put it good. Good. God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. So put 1250 back in as a preset in your car. Right. That's the first thing. And the second thing is put the phone number, the listener line back in to your favorites on your phone. So when you hear me talking, you're like, you know, I'll talk Sparky today. Boom. Call up and let's go. Right. 414-677-1250. And I appreciate Robbie and Drew for having me on and uh, letting me promote uh, the shows on 1250. My pleasure. Oh. And uh, again, let me get let me get this up. I I had a typo in the banner the first time it went up. So, don't uh, don't bump the screen like you did yesterday. Don't do that. I swear, <laughs> don't do it. Yesterday I I tanked the whole the whole the whole show. Spark. It took us completely off the air. Call Spark if you have any tips on Notebook Mike and his whereabouts at 414-677-1250. Again, that's 414-677. 1250 if you know where notebook mike is if you know anybody who might know where notebook mike is call sparky this is a desperate and serious situation yeah. we need to know five. where yeah. notebook mike is between the hours of 2 and 5 p.m call the notebook mm -hmm. mike hotline yeah that's 414-677-1250 yeah. yeah looking for notebook mike right do they still yeah. do milk cartons can we get on one of those uh, maybe i don't know <laughs> No idea. <laughs> Do we have a picture of him that I can put up on the screen that I can share up Do the on the screen? Still drink milk or is it all prime? I water? never. But wait, wait, wait a second here. Hold on. I never met Notebook Mike. Do you know who met Notebook Mike, Drew? <laughs> I did. Boy, Rami did. You want to know yeah. why? Because Notebook Mike showed up in one of his comedy events to support Rami. But hold on. Hold on. Do you know the yeah. whole story? 
Yeah, I remember the whole story. We don't need to get into that. My point <laughs> is, Rami knows what he looks like. So if anybody can draw up a little picture and put it out there for no, people, it's Rami. No, people, people should know the story. So he he had a uh, like a replica. Remember the championship belt that Giannis yeah. that Giannis wore uh, yep. after they yeah. won the time. He he had one of those. And by, he was like, by oh, the way, by the way, yeah. just to, just well, to clarify, include that. Yeah, by the way, my GLCW <laughs> cha- women's championship belt was way cooler than that damn replica belt that everybody's walking around with. Dave Hero had a real damn belt. Y'all walking around with a bunch of fake belts. Go ahead. So, the notebook, I had a show, remember the backyard, uh, yeah. Drew, here in Bayview? And uh, we used to do comedy shows. There. So I had a comedy show at the backyard. Notebook Mike was like, I'm going to come out and I'm going to bring the belt. He was gonna not bring what the... it sounds like. That is a horrible impersonation. <laughs> Holy crap! I hope you don't do impersonations in your shows. That's brutal. So, he doesn't. So he what could, was that? So he comes out and he leaves the belt in the car, and he says it's too far away to walk and go get. And then he speaks loudly during everybody's set and leaves before mine even starts. It was, it was the most disappointing appearance. Well, I mean, all I that can a think person of, has ever made. All I, I can didn't think of see is the no belt. Book. He messed up the show and left before I went on stage. All I can think you of is what? no Mike was there, <laughs> watched the people in front of you and said, wow, these dudes aren't that good. What is Rami going to be like? Dude, I'm not sticking around for this. I thought he was going to be on like a real comedy show with real people. These are people are just in the neighborhood. I'm out of here. I'm going home. I got other things to do. I got to I gotta go call the overnights with Amy Lawrence. I mean, that, that's, that's real. It was. That's, that's on our friend Aaron who booked that show. That's Aaron Clark's fault. That show sucked so bad that Notebook Mike couldn't stick around for Rami. You don't even have a stage name, Rami. And this guy was like, fuck that. I'm out. <laughs> Dude. Okay, Rami, I'll tell you this because I did that backyard show also. I'm doing one of my closers, the one about a soft white belly. You know the joke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Talking about something. And Jake Newborn, who listens to this, was riding by on his bike and just heard me use the P word. And he's like, <laughs> oh, Drew's on stage. And just kept riding. Because <laughs> he knew exactly how I sounded, what I was talking about. He oh my stopped his bike. He was like, nah, I'm just going to keep going by this one. All right. Again, that's uh, Wisconsin Sports <laughs> Daily weekdays, two to five, twelve fifty a.m. The fan and your Odyssey app. Let's get into let's get into some of the uh, the bus talk, Sparky. They take no. on the Pacers. No, let's and, talk about uh, Wisconsin nope. Sports Daily and your your comedy career. I'd rather do that. <laughs> I want to talk about this Bucks team right now. Yeah, the news uh, not good today. Not good today. The Bucks preparing to be without Giannis when this series starts Sunday against the Pacers. Round one, Sparky. From before we even get to that, like let's let's go back in time, twenty four hours, where you thought there might be a chance that Giannis there wasn't. Plays. There wasn't. No, hold, hold on. on, hold on, no, hold no, on, no, hold on. No, hold no, on. Just, just with me. reported what Shams reported yesterday. He reported the same okay. news. He did the same okay. thing, and okay, people so like then... you said, "Oh, there's new news today." There ain't no damn new news. If you read Sharania's right, tweet yesterday, it's the same tweet. Okay, then go back forty-eight hours. Thank you. Uh, when you when you thought there was a chance before my minivan was getting All smashed right. by a deer forty-eight hours ago on the interstate. We'll get in, I, Can we get into that later? I do want to get was, into that because that's that that's a, a hilarious lot. story. But um, so oh, so go back before lost. even before Car the uh, Sparky Rami laughs. Even before the news of 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 Giannis probably not being ready for the start of this series, um, how are you feeling about this series and this Bucks? The Bucks team in general after an 82 game regular season. Uh, nauseous. Okay. That's how it's Simon up. Nauseous. Fair. Um, look, if they don't have Giannis in this series against the Pacers, it's going to be an awfully tough series to win. And we talked about this on the Green Growing podcast. And look, Damian Lillard's going to have to average what? 30 plus a night? A night. Not once of four games, but every night. Bobby Portis is going to have to play like Bobby Portis does at home, but he's got to play that way on the road, right? Brooke Lopez, who's been lost in space the majority of this year, has to find his way back to earth and play like he did under butt. That would help too. Th- there's just a lot that has to happen correctly in order to win this series without Giannis. Now, if Giannis is 100% and playing like the MVP, then you don't got to rely on everybody else to get this done. Remember, Giannis threw up 60 
four against these fools earlier in the season. And then they walked off with the game ball or so he thought. So to, from, from that standpoint, you feel much better if Giannis is involved. Like I, I don't, I don't think the Pacers can beat this team with Giannis. No, without Giannis, it's going to be a series. It is definitely going to be a series. No question. Transition defense is going to be of the utmost importance in this series. They have got to get back and stop them because the Pacers are going to get out and try and run and run this old buck squad into the ground. That's what they're going to try and do. They're going to try and hit three with TJ McConnell. Um, Tyrese Halliburton's going to try and get going again. He hadn't been going in a while since that hamstring injury. So, but he's playing in front of family and friends, getting all excited. Remember him tapping his wrist, saying it's his time, Tyrese time instead of Dame time. There's a lot of payback coming, I think, from this Buck squad of what they want to do to this Pacer squad. But that Pacer squad is well coached. Rick Carla, now their defense may not be good, and that's his specialty, uh, but he's still a good coach. He's been in playoff series, as has Doc, who's choked away many. Um, so that also is going to be a fun matchup to see the adjustments throughout the series. Uh, and obviously, the course, uh, the question is, you know, Giannis and how long do you hold him out before you play him? Does he play it all in the series? Uh, and that, that's we're going to talk about that all week long, I'm sure. So my big thing right now is how lazy the Bucks looked in these last 10 games. They looked old. They looked tired. They looked lazy. Simple things like getting the ball passed to guys like Jay Crowder who decides I'm not going to go for the ball and guys like Gary Harris Jr. jump the passing lanes and they're off to the races two possessions in a row. Shit like that, Jay Crowder doesn't jump up for rebounds anymore, even on long misses on threes. Nobody on this team does anything with intensity outside of Giannis and Bobby Portis and maybe Pat Bev. Other than that, Everyone else looks like we're so talented. We can beat everybody. And you lost to the Wizards. You lost to the Grizzlies who don't have players with names on the backs of their jerseys anymore. They're like, they're like a minor league baseball team in spring training. Those yep. guys, he doesn't <laughs> fucking put any name on their jersey. Who cares? And you lose to these clowns. And you got veterans that are playoff tested that are just out there doing whatever. And then the last game of the season... Orlando comes to play. This is a seeding game. You know Bobby Portis can't play on the road. He can't focus. He doesn't like being the villain. Okay, fine. So you need that two seed to get two series at home uh, in the playoffs. And Damian Lillard goes two for 14 from the floor. And all of his points came at the free throw line, being a foul merchant. Well, are you going to get called for those fouls in the playoffs? Probably not. You're not going to the line. So you got to figure out how to make 10-foot shots. You got to figure out how to get to the rack. You got to put your shoulders down. You got to get ahead of people like Jalen Brunson's been doing. Um, he's got to figure out how to be Damian Lillard. And all the people all year long that sat there and told me, oh, Damian Lillard, we're eight and one, eight and two when Damian plays and Giannis sits. Well, time to test that because everyone's seeing a little bit, uh, they're, they're a little bit upset. Oh, well, without Giannis, no, I thought Dame was the savior. We got 82 games now. Is Damian Lillard the guy that's going to carry this team? Because it's got to be him. Yeah. No, Don't you're right. Chris Middleton to score 40. He can do it. But you got a, you got a bona fide score. Is he going to do it? I don't think so. And he's my favorite player on the team. That sucks to have to say. I don't think he's going to do it four games out of seven. Right. And, and see, the thing with Lillard is, and it's going to sound like excuses, dude's been through a lot this year, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, mentally, he has been through it. Between getting traded for the first time in his career, which he asked for, so that's his own fault, but getting traded for the first time in his career, getting traded to somewhere where it wasn't his first choice, living away from his children, which I couldn't imagine doing, living away from your children halfway across the country. Then your wife decides she's out. So now you got to go through that, and that becomes a public thing. So now everybody knows about your personal life, but you're a public figure. That happens. That's part of the game. Um, so you have to go through that. You've missed several games because of personal reasons. I have no idea what those were, but either way, it had to be bad enough or whatever for you to step away and for the Bucks to be like, that's cool. Go ahead. Um, could be just, you needed resets, whatever. Uh, there, there was a lot. And then you have Adrian Griffin as your coach. Oh, Terry Stotts is here. Sweet. We're going to run some of my offense, blah, 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 blah. He quits, walks away. And you're like, you gotta be kidding me. Terry Stotts doesn't think this dude can coach, man. He just walked out and quit. This is not good. And then you read Eric Name's piece after the season's done, talking about how 
quotes from Giannis talking about how he's drawing the plays. He was running practices and running drills. He couldn't sleep at night thinking about how he was going to have to figure out how to play the next day and get this team going in the right direction. Giannis was coaching this team for the first half of the freaking season more than any other player in the NBA. We don't want to talk about him being MVP. Give me a break. So you have all of that going on. Then you fire the dude midseason to get Doc Rivers in here. And Damian Lillard, again, I'm sure is going, what did I get myself into? What in the hell is going on? So now they bring in Doc Rivers. So now Doc Rivers doesn't come alone, though. Oh, no. He brings two assistants with him to add on to all the other millions of assistants that Adrian Griffin already had. And now we have a gigantic coaching staff and everything's being retaught. You're getting taught how to play defense the way he wants. You're getting taught what kind of offense he wants. He's telling you, you and Giannis, you have to play two-man game, which should have been going on from game one, Adrian Griffin, but it wasn't. So now you're trying to build chemistry of that and trying to figure out how Doc wants you to play. There is so much going on. If Lillard falls on his face and doesn't play well in this series, Am I going to be surprised? No, because the dude has been taxed mentally. If Damian Lillard shows up and balls out in the playoffs, am I going to be surprised? No, he's a top 75 player. That's what he should do. So mm -hmm. I guess I'm really not going to be shocked either way. Like in my mind, I haven't made up in my mind of if it goes great, I get it. But if it goes sideways and it doesn't go well, I understand that too. But that also then means next year's put up or shut up. Because there's going to be no and, excuses next year. They're paying yeah. Doc too much money to fire that dude midseason. You're going to have a whole training camp with Doc. You're going to have Doc's going to have saying this roster going into next year with John Horst to build the way he wants as much as he can based on what their assets are. And next year, y'all better figure it out and win the damn thing if you don't get it done here. Well, and, and Sparky, that's, that's, that's oh, smart. Go ahead, Drew. What when Stephen A. Smith, you know, because everyone always watches that. That's that what guy. I was just going to bring up. Yep. He, he's just. He wants every excuse to not come here because we don't have fucking room service at like the Fister or something like that. Like what? I don't care has got to say about Milwaukee, but like he's he's like, oh, the Bucks are gonna have to trade Damian Lillard. Uh, no, because you trade Damian Lillard, who are you getting better? I'm gonna keep saying this. Who's your upgrade? Does Golden State give us Steph Curry for Damian Lillard and Bobby Portis? Is that what happens? No, no, we're not upgrading our point guard spot. We have reached the peak of probably what we can get. So what you're going to get is you're going to get a couple first round picks. You'll get a first round pick, maybe a two second rounders, and maybe you'll get an NBA ready six man type guy for Damian Lillard. And that's going to be your package. And that signals a rebuild to Giannis. You know what that means? You trade Giannis. This move was to keep Giannis here. And so it's like, you're not trading Damian Lillard if this goes sideways, but after next year, if something goes sideways, I can see it. But understand something, please, please understand something. I agree with you. I'm not trading Damian Lillard either. Nope. But if Damian Lillard comes out publicly and says, I don't want to be here. I tried it. I don't like it. I need to go somewhere else. What are they going to do? That's I, the only way, though. That's the right. only way that I, I, that I would entertain. I agree. That yes, that's the and, only and way. Even then, but I don't think even, it's that crazy of an idea. If, the, if I, I'll take it another step further. What happens if Giannis goes KD in this series and that Achilles gets blown because they rush him back too soon? And he's now going to miss all of next year and into the following season. Don't do How that. is Lillard going to respond to that? Don't do that. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that out loud into the microphone. Oh, I've been saying it out loud. I've been saying it on the show. I've been saying it on the Green Girl oh. podcast. That is a thing. Eric Name brought it up from The Athletic when he was on the show. That's a thing the Bucs are thinking about <laughs> right now. They do not want Giannis to have happen to him what KD went through. That's how KD it was. KD had the calf strain, came back too soon. Rupture the Achilles. That is a real fear right now with this team as far as making sure he is ready to play and there is not a chance that Achilles is going to blow because that calf strain isn't fully healed. And how long they hold him out, we're going to find out. But that's a real thing right now because they, they cannot have that dude miss all of next season, not only from on the floor, but financially. Could you imagine trying to sell tickets? Oh, come see Damian Lillard. Okay, but but you know Giannis isn't there, so season tickets. I bet you go down. You're not going to get all these guys traveling from around the country and around the world to come see the Bucks. That's not going to be a thing. Group sales that'll be affected. I mean, there's going to be a lot affected, not only on the floor but off the floor for this organization. If something were to happen, to Giannis, to and they to know. Out? Are you trying to get people to tune out from the podcast? You're going like ex you're going like extreme levels of doom and gloom here. You're you're thinking. 20 levels of gloom and doom if Giannis goes down with like a career ending in. What are you doing? Not Why career, are you doing I didn't say this career ending? It's an, it's an Achilles. Settle down. I didn't say anything about career ending. Talk about going extreme. 
I said an Achilles. That's what I said. And that's what I've been saying. And that isn't something. All of these things, I think the organization has to talk about and have the conversation about of how important really is this series? Like if he plays, right, and he's whatever percentage and we win the series, do, do we think we're good enough to win the whole thing? Like considering everything that's happened this year, and you've lost, what, 8 of 11 going into the playoffs. Do we really feel like it's worth it to put him back out there again? T to me, I slow play it. Like, if the Bucks are 1-1 one, one after the, the two games at home, he waits. He's not playing yet. Like, it has to get to the point of on brink of elimination before I let him come back and play if I feel, you know, he's, you know, at 100% or close to 100%. Otherwise... I'm going to wait for the next series and see where we're at at that point. I, I do not want him rushed back out there unless he's 100%. 100%, not 92%, not 94%, 100 freaking percent with that calf. Oh, yeah, we would play the Knicks then. Yeah, I was I was like, wait, 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 the Knicks? I was like, yeah, because I forgot. I Yeah, I, I mixed up the seating. Um, so here, here's the thing that I want to actually ask you. I was like, when, when Rami said you were going to be on here, I was thinking about this all day. Damian Lillard on Sunday uh, after the game commented about guys not being focused. So, you know, that's a big thing that with, with Doc that they've been talking about. And he said in his post game that guys haven't been focused. Do you think he's talking a little bit about himself there? Because no. as far as I can look at this team and who's out there and what they're doing, the only two guys that look like their heads are firmly up their asses are Dame and Jay Crowder. No. Those are the only two. Cause I think Middleton is, he's always kind of the same guy. Brooke Lopez is at least out there arguing with refs about calls that he doesn't agree with. Right. And that pisses is knock off and that pisses me off. And that's got to stop. It yeah. has to, at one point in one game this year, I lost my damn mind on the air during the post game show. I literally went off for like five or six minutes or more about him. It was the most Draymond Green selfish ass thing I've ever seen in my life. He didn't get a call on this end, right? He then doesn't run back down on defense to the other end. He sits down on the offensive end. They come back the other way. Brooke is still there. Brooke is in the lane. And the bench is yelling for the other team. Three, 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 three. Brooke Lopez looks at them looks at his feet and walks back further into the lane so not to move until they blew the whistle for him on a defensive three-second call. And Doc Rivers did nothing. If that would have been me, you come sit over here next to me on the bench. And if that would have been my kid, you can come sit up here in the stands with me because you're not playing the rest of the game. We're done. We are all done. We are not doing this in front of everybody. That's ridiculous. You want to talk about Doc not, not caring and only caring about certain things. Earlier in that game, Earlier in that same game, Andre Jackson, I don't know what he did, but he pulled Andre Jackson out. That man had a dry erase board and marker at the scores table in the middle of the court. He comes out and stops Andre Jackson. Here, let me show you something. And he's drawing stuff up while he's coming out of the game. I've never in my time watching basketball seen a coach do that with an individual player while the game was going on that's completely upstaging everything else. Like that's, that's just absolutely stupid. There's no reason to do that whatsoever. An assistant coach I saw Mike, done with that Brown, I saw with Mike Brown do that a bunch last year in Sacramento. Really with the Kings. Okay. Well, I've not yeah. seen it. So that can be him going and sitting down and Prunty or somebody going over whatever it was that Doc wanted to go over, go over there and do that on the sidelines. You know, you're upstaging this dude. Everybody's watching like, oh boy, look, Doc's giving it to that guy and showing him what he did wrong or whatever else. Yet Brooke Lopez does what he does and nothing is done to Brooke Lopez. That, that type of stuff drives me nuts. And that's what pisses me off about some of these guys. It's me, me, me stuff. Doc Rivers has talked nonstop about isolation and not passing the basketball. It happened against Orlando. They were moving the ball for a quarter and a half. You get to about the, what, seven and a half minute mark, whatever it is. And all of a sudden it's dribble, 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 isolation stuff and stop scoring and away you go. This has been going on all year. So when people tell me, oh, don't worry, Sparky, they're just going to flip the magic light switch. My response is always the same thing. If you believe there is a magic light switch, that's fine. But that means the lights are off. And I'm telling you right now, this basketball team doesn't even know what wall it's on. They have no idea. They're just walking around the room trying to figure out where it is. They don't know where it is. They're not even on the right side of the room as far as I'm concerned right now. And that is an issue. You are asking an awful lot of a week of practices, which they get right now, 
to figure out all the inconsistencies that they have and all the stuff Doc wants fixed. To think that's going to be fixed over three or four practices, uh, to me, that's a huge ask. Let's be honest. Are they even at practice or are these guys getting a veteran's week off? Oh, like, no, 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 no. No, I, I mean, remember this, when Doc took his job, <laughs> Doc was doing practices and extended shoot arounds and everything else. And even when that was happening, Doc Rivers said, eventually these veterans are going to tell me I'm done. We're not doing this anymore. Uh, but he pushed them and pushed them and pushed them and pushed them because they know it's championship or bust for this organization. That's kind of where you're at when you have Giannis every year. Yeah. I mean, my, my biggest thing is, you know, it goes back to 2021 when Charles Barkley was talking about this being one of the dumbest teams in the NBA. And this year, a lot of their losses have been stupidity and loss of focus. Yep. And yeah, you're right. after 82 games, what did we learn? They, they're they perfectly fine being dumb and just being really talented. Or they, they just didn't care. Player. They're all 10 out of 10s, but they couldn't fucking do 2 plus 2. Right. But guys- the other thing, though, Drew, is, is that they just simply don't care about the regular season. They're just waiting for the postseason to start, and then we're going to see it. That's what some people believe. So maybe you and I will be wrong, but I, I, I want to see it. Because you can, with, with bad habits, you can't break a bad habit that Agreed. easily. Yep. I don't care how much money these guys are making. You just you practice bad habits. You screw around too much. When you actually got to bear down and do the things you're supposed to do, it's hard. Like I said, I was at the gym tonight playing basketball. You know how hard it is to break a bad shooting habit? It's really hard. It's for everybody. It's it's everybody like it's tough. And if you're doing dumb things and behind the back passes and no one's home, you know, you're you're not rotating properly, you're missing your spots, it doesn't matter what level you play at. It is impossible to break that habit because you're so screwed up and then you're forcing things. Well That's said. What I, and a nod and thing. Right. And a nod to Rami by using the words bear down uh, in the analysis of what's going on with the Bucks. That was a, a nice little nod to you, Rami Makhlouf. You should be very happy. I didn't even, blood, I didn't even, I didn't I didn't even realize I didn't even realize I did it. But speaking of uh, my Chicago fandom, the Cubs uh, down four to one, took a five four lead in the uh, top of the fifth inning against the Diamondbacks. Uh, now in the bottom of the fifth inning over there, one out and a man on first in case anybody was wondering. Brewers uh, well, fell last- earlier today. The last series that Craig Council managed against the Diamondbacks, I believe he thought a great idea was to um, use Jesse Winker twice. Yeah, Jesse Winker, who's playing much better outside of Milwaukee this year, by the way. Yeah, I do want to get at the Sabres with you, but uh, what? What? At least for me, one last Bucks thing. You mentioned the flip the switch thing, Sparky. I said yesterday. I do think they can flip the switch, but it's almost the last thing that I'm hanging on to at this point. And maybe I'm fooling myself when I say that. But the other thing is, and this might be another thing where I'm fooling myself. You got, you guys tell me if you feel the same way when they go, we're preparing to be without Giannis on Sunday. I go, okay, I, uh, he's not human. He'll be there. We saw this guy's knee bend backwards, 90 degrees and come back and drop a 50 piece. And, and bring home a championship um, until Giannis isn't out there or they tell us he's ruled out for game one on Sunday. I'm thinking Giannis is going to play. Is that just me or am I crazy? No, I don't think you're crazy. I think a lot of people think the dude's super human. It can come back and, you know, um, get back to it quickly. Obviously it's 24 um, seven attention to that calf and getting it right. It's not like you or I with a calf strain sitting at home. I mean, the, well, not the, like these you, people, I'm in tip top, you know, Tip top what? Go ahead. Shape. Tip top sure. shape, dude. Yeah. Okay. Um, but but either way, I mean, that to me, that is something that you really have to consider. Uh, I don't want to see him out there myself. Uh, at this point, I want to make sure he's right. But if they say he's right and he's out there, he better be right. That's all I got to say. Honestly, I want him back for game three and four on the road because I'm totally okay with home court Bobby Portis for the first two games Agreed. because of what he does in front of our fans. Yep. I'm totally fine with Bobby Portis starting on Siakam. I'm good with that. Um, <laughs> on the road, Bobby back to the bench, and we want Giannis back out there because I just I don't trust road Bobby. Agreed with you. All right, Rodney, what's your Brewers question? Um, just how do you feel about them so far this year? I know it's early Excellent. in the season. There's, there, yeah, I, I I would be too. And we uh, and Drew feels pretty good about him. I think uh, maybe a little better than he thought. Maybe he'd be feeling about him. Dude, I keep telling you this. I 
I said I have no expectations for this team with how many young guys are on it. If they suck, they suck. If they're great, they're great. I don't care. It's like the Packers were. I didn't know what to expect coming into the season. I didn't have playoff hopes. If they make it, great. And then next year, do it again and go further. That's all I want. I think that's fair. I think it's a good comparison to use the uh, Packers and the Brewers. I think offensively, it's been really good and a nice surprise. And remember, you know, no Garrett Mitchell. Um, he's been out. You're still waiting for him to come back. No Devin Williams. He's out still. Waiting for him to come back. I wonder if you knew you were, bringing, you were going to be without, so that's not a big deal. I, I think the biggest question here is going to be, how good is this starting rotation? Uh, and who's going to fill those spots? Because I'm still not convinced this rotation is set necessarily of what it'll be in September, whether it's trades at the deadline or call-ups and somebody breaks out and surprises, um, you know, Wade Miley. Uh, okay, fine. I'm good with Wade Miley. Uh, Freddie Peralta looked like an actual ace. I mean, he's, he's pitched really well. You can't ask for much more from Freddie Peralta. Uh, I'm not there on Ray yet. I mean, I know he pitched well last year. I don't know if I'm all the way there, but I'm more there on him than anybody else that they have put into this rotation to this point. Uh, so we'll see, you know, they've had good luck, uh, you know, fixing pitchers careers and getting good careers out of them when they've been in Milwaukee. So hopefully that continues. I'm definitely not sold on Abner Uribe at any point. Um, I have had questions about him coming in, being the closer or whatever his role is going to be still have questions about how good Uribe is going to be. Uh, so there's questions there, but offensively to me, this is just a more balanced lineup that can attack you in more different ways. And we've seen out of this Brewers team in a long, long time. Uh, speed kills, and they're going to win games because of their speed. There's no question about it. I, I've i mostly liked how little this team actually strikes out compared to last year because I was like, oh, look at all the young guys on the team. I mean, Terang himself just being a completely different hitter this year is mind-blowing to me, given it's 21 games. But he's a completely different hitter. And, like, just one guy in the lineup striking out way less, making harder, better contact more consistently, that changes the bottom half of that that batting order. So that's that's nice to see out of them. I like that they're not relying on home runs to score. They hit them. They're, they're decent. Like, what, they're middle of the pack in the MLB in home runs right now, I think? That's good enough for me. I expected this team to be bottom half. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with you. Um, so I, I don't, it'll be fun. Um, that idiots running the Cubs. So we'll see what they do. Uh, Cardinals. Uh, I'm not sold on the Cardinals necessarily. They're old, which means they're probably going to be hurt, um, throughout the season. Uh, so I, I'm not as concerned about the Cardinals. Pirates and Reds are interesting. I don't know if either one of them are ready to take a step. I think the Pirates might flirt with 500 this year, which would be good for them. Uh, Reds, I'm not sold on either. So I think there's a legit possibility it's the Brewers or the Cubs at the end of the year, and maybe they're battling it out down to the wire the last week of the season, uh, you know, back and forth to see who wins this division. And if that happens, I'll be ecstatic if they're in it like that at the end of September, considering how young they are. And it'll be very fun. Uh, Sparky, a quick comment from the YouTube page, Mega Death Knight says uh, Sparky is fired up. And yeah, he was fired. I think maybe a little too fired up. Spark was a little under the weather coming in and I hear the voice going. So I'm going to let you go. That's because I often I keep doing that. Y'all don't hear that's, that's yeah. I mean, you I see know, it obviously, but I, yeah, I know I want to let you go, but I have to ask you about the, uh, the deer incident because lots of, I, I, I look, man, we live in Wisconsin. I've lived in the Midwest my whole life. I've heard a lot of, I hit a deer with my car. The text I got from Sparky drew said a deer hit me. Correct. A deer. <laughs> A deer hit me. I've never, I've, I've never yeah. heard of such a thing. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, and first of all, I have to clarify you or you you in a vehicle. It was you in a vehicle. What do you mean a deer hit you? How did a deer hit you? Going down the interstate, uh, thirty nine, uh, coming back from Wausau. I was in Stevens Point. I didn't know where I was at the time until I got off the interstate and asked somebody where I was. Okay, um, but. Going down, going 70 miles an hour, whatever the speed limit was, I think it was 70. Going 70 miles an hour, I was in the middle lane. Middle lane. There was a car in the slow lane right by me. And Kay has her head on the window, and she's sleeping like on a pillow. And Jackson's in the back playing games. The <laughs> baby's sleeping. And I was like, just driving along. I think I had the, what was that? Brewers game was on maybe at that point. I don't remember. And I'm just driving. No big deal. 
And all of a sudden, wham! And I was like, what the hell was that? And I'm like, I'm looking straight ahead. Like, there's no way I ran over anything. And Kay woke up. She thought somebody shot the car or something. And I look in my rear view mirror and I see a deer flying back behind the car on the interstate. I'm like, what? So we pull off. And at this point, my heart's racing. I've never hit a deer, had a deer hit me. Nothing. Like, I have no idea. So I pull off at the next exit. I get out and I look. I'm pretty sure I'm not positive. Obviously I'm pretty sure that guy next to me hit the deer initially because the, Oh, full, it got the clipped. full it length got clipped of that deer went into the side of your car. Correct. The whole oh, full oh. length body. Boom. Jackson said he saw it. The saw it in the window. Boom. Hit the window and bounce off. Um, so it like the, it's a, uh, it was a minivan. We just got it. Don't even have the title for it. Yeah. We bought it down in Illinois. Uh, the, the, the sliding door on the minivan is completely all bowed in from where the thing hit. And then it's scratched on the passenger side door. But I was telling Kat, I was like, we're lucky because that could have shattered from when that deer hit and you could have been mm-hmm. all full of glass and cut up. And I mean, this could have been horrific. Uh, so r- really, I mean, we really lucked out in a, in a big way that everybody was safe. And obviously is the most important thing, but I'm telling you, there is no chance you, what are the odds of a, a deer hitting you going 70 some miles an hour? Number one. And number two, that it gets clipped and hits you in the middle lane, full length onto the side of the vehicle. I, I just you can't even make this stuff up. Sometimes I was, uh, I was coming back from Madison, uh, from comedy on state, like when they, when they have their open mic on Wednesdays. And this is like a few years ago when I had my old Mitsubishi eclipse and a semi truck was on the side of the road. And- Don't talk about semis at me, please. What? <laughs> no, it, just keep going. It, Don't worry about it. No, no, no. It hit. It hit like a deer, and there was like deer carcass in the middle two lanes. So like I was like, oh shit! Like I swerved out of the way because like you saw like two halves of an animal that was ripped apart, oh. and I ran the rack over, and like I destroyed my front tire. Like it was like there oh. were everywhere because of this shit. And yeah, like I, I looked at my tire. I'm like, what the hell happened? There was like antler in my tire. Oh, hitting the carcass. That's awful, was, dude. And like, I mean, it was like it was a pretty gory scene. Like it was straight up, like it was ripped in half and just blood between all. The, like it was so gross, and that whole freeway smelled so bad, man. You can stop describing it anytime you want. That's that would be fine with me and Sparky. I'm sure everybody watching or listening oh, that, right now. That's all brutal. right. That's brutal. that's a that's a great way to end the show. Uh, Sparky, brought it up. I didn't know he was going to go there with Sparky. Did you notice everybody in baseball is named Jackson? Real quick, I meant to ask you that and forgot. Yeah. Like every Jackson every, Merrill, Jackson Holiday, Jackson Cheerio. Yeah, you thought it was an original name when you named your child? No, Jackson. no, 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 no. I thought it was original the way I spelt it. Right, J A X O N. The problem was there's that goofy TV show that was out at that point that apparently one of the characters' names was spelt that way. Angels of Anarchy. Is that the name of the show? Sons of Anarchy. Uh, uh, Sons, Sons of Anarchy. Anarchy. Whatever it was. So apparently, yeah. was there a name of a uh, character yeah, named Jack Jackson Teller, in it? The main yeah, character, whatever. Jack's Teller. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So apparently, that was the reason. I mean, we had him in February. By the end of the year, it was like the second or third most popular boy name spelled that way. So clearly, by the end of the year, we were, you know, obviously clearly not that creative like we thought we were when we came up with the name uh, in February. Uh, literally, I mean, don't you remember how this played out? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, had, like I had ours, yeah. and then the PR guy for the Brewers had his baby a week later, same exact spelling. And then a week after that, I think it was Noah Syndergaard had his kid named it the exact same spelling. I said, oh, we're screwed. It's all yeah. over, man. I, lo- I love that half over. of America is naming their kid after a fictional leader of a bike gang. That's that's you know what was worse? For, for little girls, like when Game of Thrones was going on, Danny was a big name for Daenerys. Like a lot of people were their kids Danny. That was weird. Never saw it. My uh my cousin, neither. you can watch the first four seasons and then tune out. My uh my cousins, they had a they had a baby uh two years ago and uh they named it Camden because they're big baseball fans, so they named him after Camden Yards. That was pretty sure. neat. Yeah, Fun. that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that's that. A good name. I like yeah. that name. That's a neat name. Shouts out to baby Cam, dude. He rules. I've heard of Cubs fans naming their kids uh Addison, because that's the one of the the the, the Addison Clark, that's the, like the intersection that Wrigley Field is on. Speaking of uh, 
Diamondbacks took the lead back at seven to five now in the bottom of the fifth. So uh, yeah. there's your Cubs update. Well, Jesse Winker will help you out. Sparky, anything uh, anything you wanted to get in before we wrap this thing up, or uh, are you you ready to go and uh, go, Betty? Bye. Uh, I got to go post screening growing podcast. I got schedule right. imaging for tomorrow. Got schedule imaging for the Memphis station. Oh, I'm filling in on uh, ESPN Memphis Thursday, Dude, Friday this week. Talking into a microphone. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What? You talk wow. about G. Jackson? What? You talk about Gigi Jackson? And oh yeah, for sure. Yes, yes. Gigi nice. Jackson. I uh, was just talking about how he's got Chris Middleton's uh, cell phone number, uh, and he's right. been hitting up Middleton a lot to, uh, to get some tips and so forth uh, of how to try and win. And that, I mean, that, that's great. But yeah, ESPN Memphis this week, I'll be on. Now, again, you'll have to either listen to that or listen to me because I'll be on there while I'm on here. We're going to record it a little bit earlier. I'm filling in for Gabe Kuhn on ESPN Memphis, Thursday, Friday, okay. Monday, Tuesday, so Wednesday. Check Tuesday. out Wisconsin Sports Daily, weekdays yeah. two to five. You want yeah. to hear about you want to hear about Wisconsin sports, not Memphis. Yeah. Uh, that's weekdays two to five, twelve fifty a.m. The fan and the Odyssey app, as well as the Green and Growing podcast, Curt and Long, the Spare Time Bowling Show. Did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. All right, we're good and, uh, again. Uh, where Thursday, is Notebook Mike? You're on the show Thursday in studio. Thursday, 4 o'clock, I'll be on the show in studio with Steve Sparky Pfeiffer. We need to know where Notebook Mike is. Call Sparky between the hours of 2 and 5 p.m. to talk yep. sports or whatever bullshit. But more importantly, to tell us where podcast. Notebook Mike is, 414-677-1250. Help Sparky find Notebook Mike and bring him back to the airwaves. Yeah, I think that would be good, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I got a I little surprise for you. I got a little surprise for you on Thursday, by the way. Oh, okay. I, I got All a right. little surprise. Yeah. Oh, right. Rami. Well, Sparky. Yes. Somebody, somebody quoted our podcast in the Milwaukee Bucks Nation, which is not an endorsement of us. We made it, ladies and gentlemen. It was on the same Sparky. post. Where I called somebody schizophrenic. <laughs> okay, Sparky. Appreciate your time. Best of luck with the new show and uh, the dozen other shows that you host. And I'll see you Thursday at four o'clock, my friend. Sounds good. Screw Cat Council. Goodbye. All right. Love you, buddy. <laughs> There's uh, Steve Sparky Piper <laughs> joining us here on uh, the Rami and Drew show. Drew, um, I'm ready to go. You ready to go? You got anything? You got any last words before we wrap this thing up? Yeah. The dude said it was the Rami show. And I was like, ah, I'm on this too. And then he'll. <laughs> <called you. laughs> <laughs> yeah he's still around it's the rami and drew show not the rami show and this was episode 45 if you're not following us subscribing rating reviewing telling a friend already please do so it's on youtube spotify and apple thank you for tuning in and we will talk to you next time